talking a little bit about things you think about. So when people come to you, so I think this is what your first meeting with them is like. So tell yes. me a little bit about what that looks like. Yeah, and the first thing is a lot, and this is this is where, where you come in, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know, there's setbacks to deal with on lots and everything. So a lot of times people will come in with a lot, and they say, I want to build this house that you know it, it runs parallel to the water and it's 80 feet long, and they have a hundred foot lot, and it's like, you can't build a house there. Um, so it's, you know, if you're if you're in the process of looking for a lot. It might be a good idea to have some idea what you want for a house just to make sure they're compatible. Did everybody hear that? If you're in the process of wanting to build, find the builder, maybe before you find the lot so he can tell you. Possibly, or at least have some idea what your needs are going to be with that lot so that your house will, will fit on there, you know? Yeah, we actually sometimes will put in our offers to purchase for vacant land. We'll give like a seven day window to get the builder on the property to make sure they can build what they want to build on the lot as a contingency in the offer to purchase. So I think that's super smart. Awesome. Yeah. Talking about priorit prioritizations for the lot, I would think it would be the same with waterfront or off water. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you know, look at the things that you're going to need and make sure that a lot is going to fill those needs. You know, water, you know, exposure, mm -hmm. size of the lot, if you want some outbuildings and things, you know, just, you know, we, so often we try to shoehorn this house into this lot and I want this big garage and then I want to be able to drive in and, you know, it just, it does not, it, it can be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a lot, now's the time to make sure, I mean, obviously, you're, you're limited in your lot selection too. Right. But I mean, now's the time to make sure you can get what fits your needs. Absolutely. When you're like, when you go to a lot and you see, um, do you get an idea if you think, okay, this part of this lot looks a little low or a little swampy that this might not be ideal on this corner of the spot, but yet we have all of this room. Can you kind of get a gauge for that when you're out there? Yeah, like you septic can. that might be able to go in well or, or so I would think you've probably walked enough land that you probably can get a yeah. decent gauge, not 100%, but a pretty decent gauge. Yeah, and you can look at, um, you know, the, the, like the DNR website and everything. If it's an actually designated wetland, you can't build in it. No touch at all. Nope. But if it's not designated wetland, it's just kind of low and marshy, then it's not as big a deal. We can at least get up to it and maybe even fill some of it if it's, if it's not designated, you know, so there's some options there. Awesome. But that's another thing, I guess, if you're looking at a lot, if you have designated wetlands on it, you can't touch them. Well, and one of the things I find is a lot of people with the waterfront, especially, they want flat and level because as they age, mm -hmm. they don't want to have stairs. But the one thing we try to tell people is flat and level also means sometimes you get some lowlands, sometimes you get, um, mm -hmm. you know, you don't get big basements with walkouts. No. Nope. You get crawl spaces. So you have to, they have to sort of understand that you know, that sometimes what you think you want might not really be 100% what you want. Yeah, because the water is the same level here as it is here, same level at the lake is where you want to put your house. So, yep. so something's got to give. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, design ideas, I love that. So do you have a lot of people that come to you with like their Pinterest board and everything ready to go? We do, and we see the whole spectrum. Some okay. people come in and say, oh, I want a house. And it's like, okay. We, That'd probably be me. We build houses. <laughs> um, and I've had people come in, give me like 30 printed pages and a thumb drive. And they, here's what I'm looking at. It's like, okay, well, I can work with that too. You know? Awesome. Um, the biggest thing is number of bedrooms, um, things that are priority there. I mean, if you're on the lake, do you want to have a big open kind of atrium in the middle? Um, you know, do you want a screen porch? Are you somebody who cooks? You want a big kitchen? Mm -hmm. Things like that are good going in. And then, you know, you can start with that and kind of tailor the plan because, you know, like you said before, this is your chance to make your house, specifically yeah. your house, you know, want exactly one of a kind. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So I, I, I think that's interesting that they come to you with those ideas of what they want. And then when they're looking at that, at what point do you draw the plans? Do they, like, how does that work? Yeah, and that's another thing that's a, that's a variable. Sometimes... You know, we can draw the plan. Sometimes people will come in with a plan already, oh. or they'll know someone if they've already been in contact, contact with someone, and then usually we'll you know, kind of bounce back and forth ideas and just share some guidance on what works, what doesn't, um, and they can get the plans drawn. But definitely, yeah, we, we do quite probably have the plans. Okay. And yeah, that's a, that's a kind of a fun process too, to, you know, you start with blank slate with kind of their ideas, and you draw that up, and then you send it over, and then you go through a few iterations, and you know, refine it. 
I bet you that's a fun, that would be fun to me. You're like, oh, we could do this. That's awesome. Next to actually building, that's probably my next favorite thing. I tell my wife, it's like a building video game. You get to draw it. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of enjoyable. I would think that would be fun. Plus, you're also getting people to realize what they've been dreaming of maybe for their entire life. Right. And then, yeah. And most people don't get to do. To get to see it and, you know, get some 3D shots of it and everything, it helps a lot for them to say, well, that's that's really not what I thought it was going to be. Or yes, that's it. That's perfect. You know. Yeah. So you go from drawing the plans. Then what happens after that? So then we would we would look at pricing. You know, we try to get a rough idea um, what their budget is and draw it to fit that budget. And then you know then we'll then we'll price it. And you know we'll probably talk a little bit about later about you know you know, square footage numbers and everything. But there's there's a big spectrum based on finishes and everything. So. Usually I try to guide them to fit them within their budget, and then once we get it drawn, then we'll actually price it. And okay. then, you know, if, in, in that, it's good to prioritize too. It's like, oh, these are the things that I must have. Mm -hmm. These are the things that I'd like to have. So if, if we get to that point and it's like, hey, we're, we're $20,000 or where we want to be, then we kind of know what things we can cut. And where, where you can make someone save up some yeah. of those dollars. If you go talk to a builder and you enter into the design process, ask them, is the design contract separate from the build contract? Okay. Which to me, logically, it should be. Mm -hmm. um, somebody comes in and say, we'll, we'll design your house, here's how much that costs. And when we're done with that, you've paid me for that, this is your plan. You could get bid from me, you can get bid from a few other people and decide what you want to do. But there are builders who, once you've come to the end of that design phase, they say, okay, now we're done, now we're going to build your house. And so if you don't want them, uh, yeah, they did. I had this happen with someone. They came in and the, the price was inflated, to say the least, on the house. And they said, well, we've decided we don't want you to build the house. And they said, well, then you're going to have to draw a new plan. So they had to start over with a different builder with that with a new plan. And, and I've seen it more than once. So that's a good question to ask, just to make sure. Um, yeah, starter question, starter question, you know, yeah. if, if you're drawing the plans.